Gude and welcome to this technical walkthrough on how to install Raspi. This video is part of my YouTube video series on Raspi from A to M. And if you do not know what this series is about, I will put a link to the introduction on this series in the description box below. Gude. Hacky tacky nerd stuff. Open voice enthusiast. Open voice, open future. Let's start by taking a look to Raspi's installation documentation. So let's check our browser and open its documentation and hit that installation point. And as you can see on the left navigation side, Raspi supports multiple installation ways, such as Docker containers that works on every operating system that supports running Docker container instances. Then we have Debian and operating systems that are based on Debian, such as Ubuntu, such as in my case here, and we have uh, Raspberry Pi OS. Then we have a virtual environment, which basically means running it by cloning the repo and compiling it yourself. It can be easily included in Home Assistant and you can install it uh, on Microsoft Windows by running it uh, with that Windows subsystem for Linux. So if you do not have the chance to run it by Docker container image on Windows, you can run it with the Windows subsystem for Linux. This will not be in today's video scope, but please let me know in the comments if you would like to see a Windows installation of Raspi. Let's take a look to the Docker installation, which can be applied on every operating system that supports running Docker container images. So the first two steps here are just to ensure that you have Docker installed and that your local user has the permission to access the Docker host system. The relevant part is this snippet here. And so let's take a closer look to this snippet. First of all, the Raspi port 1201 will be bind so you can access a Raspi by a local host with that port inside your container. Raspi is its name and we have two volumes that will be mapped. One read-write volume, which is inside the container mapped to slash profiles and will write the data to your local system in your home directory dot config raspi profiles. And we have a read only mapping. This is uh, mapped to etc local time, which is uh, important for time zone settings. And not really surprising for a toolbox to build your own local voice assistant, we have to map your audio setup. So microphone and speaker has to be available inside your Docker container instance. And this is the name of the image that will be pulled. So let's check that line here. So the image name is Raspi. And if you take a look on Docker Hub, you can see this Raspi Raspi image here too, with some information and release tags from previous released versions. So if you are interested, you might take a look on Docker Hub and search for Raspi in there. Now it's time to take a look to our terminal window. Check this file. So as you can see, I'm running Ubuntu 2022.04.1, the long-term support version. And I have running Docker in the version 20.10.22. And now let's check that I have no running Raspi container or images pulled at the moment. So let's check Docker image list all. So no Docker images pulled yet. And Docker container list all. So no images, no container at the moment. And let's execute it. So Docker image is not pulled yet. So now it's pulling all the required files and images from Docker Hub. Now the image has been pulled and we can take a look to Docker image list all. And now we can see I've pulled the latest tag from Raspi's container image. As the container is up and running, it's time to check our browser and see if localhost on the bound port 1201 is available. So let's go to our Firefox browser again and open localhost this port. And here we are. So this is the super simple installation of Raspi by using a Docker container image. 
The next way to install Raspi is by using a Debian package, which is not just limited to Debian OS, but also applies to operating systems that are based on Debian, such as Ubuntu, as in my case, or Raspberry Pi OS. So let's check documentation on how to install as a Debian package. If you are unsure which architecture you have, you can run this command here to get more information. In my case, I'm using that AMD 64-bit version. So let's copy download link and hop on to our terminal and download that file. Download completed. Before trying to install that package, let's check that Raspi is not installed at the moment. So no Raspi package installed yet. If I try to install that Raspi package as it's written in the documentation, I will run into an exception based on dependencies. But I will show it to you and then help you on how to solve it. So let's run at install that Raspi package. So, and as you can see, I'm running into a dependency issue called libg Fortran in version 4. And this is based on because I'm using Ubuntu 22.4 version. And in this Ubuntu version, I cannot install that version 4 of that library, but version 5 is already installed. So let's get back to our browser. And thanks to a community member from Raspi community called Jens Schiffke, he wrote a post on how to fix this issue. I'll put a link to that post in the description box below. And as an important note, you just can run these steps if you run into that dependency issue. If you have libg Fortran in version 4 installed or are able to install it on your local operating system, these steps are not required. So let's go to our terminal and I will run these steps. It's already downloaded, so my Raspi file is within here. First step, first step finish. Let's run second step and the third step to replace that version 4 into 5. And finally, pack a new Debian file with that replaced dependency version. Last step successfully too. Now it's time to install the package. And after updating dependency information, installation worked without a problem. Now it's time, according to documentation, to run Raspi with an English profile. Starting up several services and now let's hop on to our Firefox and check if the web front end of Raspi is up and running. So let's open localhost port 12101 and here we are. So installation by Debian package worked good. So let's go back to the documentation. So we have installed it by Docker and by Debian package. As I've said, we can install it by virtual environment. So let's take a look to this option, um, installing several dependencies and then just cloning the repo, running configure, make and make install. So this creates a Python virtual environment as it's written here in the documentation. I guess this is not a preferred way when you see how easy it is to install it with Docker and Debian package. But please let me know in the comments if you would like me to show you this virtual environment manually way or show you explicitly how easy it is to integrate in Home Assistant. By the way, Louis from Everything Smart Home channel made a great video on that. I will put a link to this video in the description box too. Or if you are interested to see how to install it on Windows using subsystem for Linux. The next video in this Raspi from A to M series will be on the first steps. So diving into the web front end and try to find out what the first things are you can do with a fresh new installation of Raspi. If you have any ideas or 
wishes on what you would like to see as a video technical walkthrough on Raspi, please let me know in the comments. I'm really happy for any kind of feedback. Yeah, and that's it for today's video. I hope you like it. If it is so, please give this video a thumb up, share the video and if you haven't already, please consider unsubscribing to my channel as this would really help me and the channel a lot. I wish you all a nice rest of the day and if you like, we might see us next time. Bye!